Mystery Beers episode number 238 of... Brutal Battle. So, I'm sure people were not expecting another Mystery Beers episode this soon, since we're still kind of shut in houses and all that jazz. Not going to talk about that a whole lot, but um, we have something very interesting for this. And this is a Mystery Beers episode... But it's mystery beers in the sense that I know what the beers are. Rebecca doesn't. I don't. So they're mystery for me. Yes. She does know one key thing about it. And um, I was able to order these beers and have them shipped to my house without having to sign for them or anything. That's because we're doing a non-alcoholic beer tournament. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, so some people may be saying, oh, my God, why are you doing this? Non-alcoholic beer is terrible. It- is that true, though? We're going to find out. That's the question. I mean, I know it used to be terrible because all you could get before was like O'Doul's and St. Pauli Girl and you no know, non-alcoholic Bush and crap like that. But just so people know, there are craft breweries that are solely dedicated to brewing non-alcoholic beer now. Now, I had been keeping my eye on the one in particular, and once I was able to get a mixed six-pack of that one, then I ordered that and then was like, wait a minute, are there other non-alcoholic breweries out there? And lo and behold, there are. There are a few, actually, a decent amount. There's a handful out there, basically. So we're doing this tournament. This is non-alcoholic beer from two different uh, non-alcoholic breweries. Now, one of them I was able to order a mixed six-pack from. One of them I was able to order a mixed five-pack from. Which is kind of weird, uh, but, you know. Uh, so, there are other non-alcoholic breweries out there that I looked into, but the problem is I didn't want to get into a situation with buying their beers, and I, in order to get a few different beers, I'd have to buy entire six-packs of each of the beer, and I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to like it, and for that reason, I'm actually nervous about this tournament, because what if I don't like any of it? They might all be garbage. We don't know. Right. So, I, I want to like some of this. Because there are times where I'm drinking some beer, and I, I know some other people can probably feel this out there. I've been drinking, I, I have like one or two beers during the week, and then I'm like, oh, man, I'd really like to keep drinking beer, but I don't want the alcohol at this point. And that's when having a non alcoholic beer mm-hmm. would be a really nice thing, you know, especially if it, you know, still tastes like beer. You could have those one or two drinks and then switch to the non alcoholic beer and still get the flavor but not have to deal with more alcohol. So I would love that to be an option. And it just dawned on me while I was looking into this, let's see if that is an option. So we're putting to the test in this tournament two non-alcoholic breweries to see if any of these beers live up to the Brutal Babble standard of tasting like good beers. So we're going to do the normal ranking where we will you know, smell them, taste them, all that. We'll give them a number each, and then we'll reveal what they are. So this is kind of a showdown between these two breweries. I mean, it is, but at the same time, it's also just us trying to see what's good non-alcoholic beer-wise between these two. Many different things are going to happen on this episode. (laughs) Yeah. Hopefully we like something. I mean, if we come out of this liking one of these beers, I'll feel like that's cool. Yeah. The other thing is just how often do beer podcasts delve into the realm of non-alcoholic beer? I really don't think they're doing it. Yeah. So this is kind of an uncharted territory. Let's just dip our toe in and see what, is it warm? Is it cold? How are we going to feel about the water in this? So. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Um, I feel like there was like one other thing I wanted to say about this, but, oh yes. So the one was a five pack I got. The one was a six pack I got. So what I did is I took two beers out of one of them and one beer out of the other one. So we're only doing four and four. Now the tasting order is based off their untapped ranking. So the first beer we're having of the eight beers is the lowest rated on untapped. Ah. So the final and eighth one will be the highest rated on untapped. So you're telling me these four are going to be crappers? Well, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, they could be. I mean, they didn't have like the worst ratings ever. So these are on untapped. Yes. Yes. These are on, these are all on untapped with, you know, multiple rank ratings to the point where they have averages. Okay. So the first one we're going to have is lower than the second one, is lower than the third one, is lower than the fourth one, and so on. So let's jump into it. The first one looks like... It's a little hazy. Yeah, I can't see through it. It's very orange. It kind of looks like a cider almost. Um, Yeah, I I can agree with that. There's not much head to it either. 
yellowish, orangish, kind of hazy, kind of murky. Um, yeah. It smells kind of like beer. I mean, it smells like beer. I don't smell alcohol. It smells like the smell, it smells very strongly like a brewery. Right, yeah. Like the yeast, the malt, the... Yeah. Well, and that's a, this is an important distinction to make, is that non-alcoholic beer is made like normal beer. You know, you, you're you using malt and hops and yeast and all that stuff, and it produces alcohol, it ferment, ferments and all that. It's just, they have to then boil the beer to get the alcohol out through vapor. Uh. So when I was looking it up, uh, it, it seems like the most popular way to do it to not compromise the flavor of the beer because having to boil it can really compromise the flavor to get the alcohol out. Apparently what a lot are doing is called uh, vacuum distilling, which is basically where it will drop the boiling point of the alcohol so they don't have to heat it as hot. And it mm. will steam out the alcohol. So, and I think technically it's non-alcoholic if it's 0.5% alcohol or less. Okay. So you can't exceed the 0.5%. Okay, so there could be some alcohol in here. Well, for every, I, I'm pretty sure for every non-alcoholic beer, there's some alcohol in it. Yeah. It just doesn't hit the threshold of having to be called alcoholic. What is that smell? Is it just really, really yeasty? Um, it smells... Uh, there's something else in there that is There's a awful. little bit of a Band-Aid smell. There's something that's a little off-putting. Yeah, it's like plastic and Band-Aids yeah. a little bit. And it doesn't smell good. I'm going to no. be honest. No, it doesn't. Actually, my first few snips, sniffs smelled kind of good, but... Oh, I don't think it smelled good. Now it's not America. smelling so hot. Do you have any guesses on what this could be based on the smell? Ooh. What the? That's terrible. Oh my god. Mm. Well, um, Ugh. it's it has some bitterness on the finish, like an actual beer. It's very watery. It doesn't have a lot of <laughs> yeah. body. Um, as I continue to sip it, I mean, I taste a slight citrus note in there somewhere, a slight pine in there as well, but it's so, so vague, and it finishes with bitterness, and like you were saying, it's very watery. It's so thin. And for tasting as gross as it is, I can't pick out any flavors. <laughs> so that, like, plasticky band aid that's there in the flavor, like, it's not just in the smell. No. Yeah, I don't... You know, the more I drink it, it's not terrible, but it doesn't really taste like beer that much. You know what I mean? No, it doesn't remind me. I feel like we're on... We've been watching a lot of Cutthroat Kitchen, and I feel like it's like... When the judges come on, they're like, does it... Re does it... Oh, we're going to look at the taste, the presentation, and it doesn't remind me of whatever they're trying to make. So I feel like, does this remind me of a beer? <laughs> right, yeah. I agree with that. Not so, really. So, uh, here, so here's the thing. Like, you can't taste it and think, how does this compare to beer? No. Because it's, like, it doesn't taste like beer. Like, it's not right. going to be beer because that alcohol is not there and everything. It's brewed the same way, but it's just not going to taste that way. Um, but also, I was thinking, like, if, if someone just gave it to you and didn't tell you it's beer, I feel like you'd drink it and be like, what is this crap? Yeah. You know, like, I feel it's, like you do need the context of saying this is beer, but it's just non-alcoholic. Yeah, I don't like it at all. Yeah, I don't want to drink. I don't think it's the worst thing ever. I'm sure it's probably better than something like O'Doul's, but yeah, I, I won't. So I, I was just saying before we recorded, I, I was like, we should have had an O'Doul's. We had <laughs> yeah, something to did. compare it to. Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever even had an O'Doul's. Yeah. So like in comparison, this could be much better than O'Doul's. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. I don't like it. One. I don't like it. Yeah. One's all around. <laughs> it's not it's not a good time. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and reveal it. So style, I have no idea. I mean it's Yeah, I guess. I'm assuming I'm not getting any hops, so I'm assuming it's not like a pale ale or an IPA. Um, maybe a wheat. It's well, not clean okay. and crisp, so I'm thinking it's not like a Pilsner or a lager. I'm going with a wheat. It is 
an IPA. No. <laughs> That's an IPA? That's yeah. supposed to be an IPA? Yeah. So this is by Bravas Brewing. Now, I believe that they say they're the ones I was keeping my eye on because I had heard of them as being the first non-alcoholic brewery. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, Bravas, they were established in 2015. And it says contains less than 0.5% alcohol. They don't say the specific because I guess I don't really need to. Um, yeah, established in 2015. Yeah, it's just and IPA. where are they? They're out of Costa Mesa, California. Okay. Um, yeah. And yes, it's supposedly... Oh, they have ingredients. Water, malted barley, malted rye, hops, yeast. Well, that's... You know. Pretty generic. Yeah, so I don't... Okay, well, sorry. An IPA. Ooh. Yeah, stinker. Okay, moving on. All right, let's move on. The second one. What does this look like? So this looks more like a beer. Yes, it does. And It's like that orangish yellow. It's clear. It yeah. like looks like a beer. The, yeah. The first one did, I don't think looked like a beer. I mean, this looks like to me, it could be just based on looks like a really nice, super clear filtered West Coast style IPA. Yeah. And yeah, because it is super clear. Kind of, I mean, it smells like a beer. It does smell like a beer. I'm getting some de- uh, decent bitterness. Yeah, there's a decent bitterness. There's that honey on the nose, I feel like. There's a little honey. A little, um, I'm getting like some floral notes, some definitely some mm. hop characteristics. It smells a little bit of like urine, though. <laughs> It does smell a little There's bit like a little urine. urine note. <laughs> like like when you're really dehydrated, like real rich smelling yeah. urine has a lot of minerals in it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But it, I, also when I smell it, like I smell a lot of malt. Yeah. And I feel like it kind of has a smell like when you're in a brewery and you sp- smell that spent malt grain. Yeah, that's how the first one was a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, but it had those weird uh, yeah. things. Yeah, this, this smells this- good. This doesn't smell bad. This smells a lot cleaner, a lot more simple than the first one, to be honest. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's not... It's not gross. Once again, there's not a whole lot of body to it. It's very, very watery. And there's not a lot of flavor, but what flavor is there is decent. It's almost neutral. Yeah. Um, I taste the malt, though. That's kind of nice. I feel like I taste, like, a decent amount of malt to it. There's a little bit of bitterness on the finish. I do get a slight bit of honey in there. And then I feel like I get a little bit of, like, a lemon peel yeah. tang to it. I don't... I don't hate this. No, I don't either. Um, but I'm not sure I would choose to drink it either. No, but I'm thinking for for people, for whatever reason, who don't or can't drink. Are these gluten-free by chance? Uh, I don't know. know? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, the Bravis one doesn't say it's gluten-free. I'm assuming they're not gluten-free. Yeah, probably not. That would probably add a whole other level of weird taste. Okay, so number for this one. Um, We're not doing halves. Do you think we should do halves for this one? I don't know. Just because it's non-alcoholic versus... We can do what we want. Well, okay... Let's let's just rate it our normal way. Okay. But let's just throw out the the distinction that the number one as a bottom for that first one means an even harsher number I mean, I than a like number should, one. Like for I would our give normal. the first one a zero. Right. Exactly. So, so so what I'm trying to say is we're doing one to ten for the non-alcoholic. But just remember that the non-alcoholic will be its own rating group, yeah. not so, lumped in with the alcoholic beers. If I'm giving the first one one, I'm going to give this one a two because I think it yes. is it's it's definitely better. That is exactly what I was going to say. Yes, um, yes. So, so this I feel like is a pale ale. Okay. And w- what I mean to say is, if we were trying the second one with other actual beer. So I, w- I would give one. it a one. Yeah. Right. But since it's against other al- non-alcoholic beers, it gets a two. So that's why I'm saying it's its own rating. Yeah. So this one is from the other brewery. It is a blonde ale. It's a blonde. Yes. It is a blonde ale and it's 0.3% alcohol. They have pinpointed it. Now this is Partake Brewing and they are out of Toronto, Canada. Oh, Canada. Yes. So Partake Brewing out of Toronto, Canada. 
Now, I would read you what the ingredients are, but I can't. Oh, no, wait, I can. Well. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's in it's in English and in French. Okay. Because it's from Toronto. Water, barley, hops, yeast. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, better. We better. got better. We did get We're better. Still not something I want to buy, to be honest, but it's better. Okay. Keep cold, drink fresh. I'm going to cleanse my palate on this one. All right, let's go to the third one now. Now, this one looks like probably what Rebecca is most excited about, I, I would guess. think. I guess. I don't know. This is, looks like a stout or porter. Yeah. It's dark. It's dark, but it's not super dark. I mean, you can see around the edges. Yeah. like It's like brownish, reddish. Hmm. This actually smells... I think it smells good. You're making a face. I smell that Band-Aid. Oh, like really? the the plastic and Band-Aid. I will say they all kind of have a, a similar smell. Yeah, right? They all have like a tang. Like this kind of tanginess yeah. in the nose that's weird. That's just not a normal beer. I don't know. This one, once again, it just doesn't smell that great. But you are getting a few nice notes out of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting some chocolate. I do get a little. I'm getting bit of some it. ash. Yeah, I get a, I get a bit of a roastiness, a bit of a chocolate yeah. as well. Um, yeah, like a little. I'm getting like yeah, that like a coffee roastiness. Yeah, I could see that the chocolate, the coffee, but for me that like plastic and band aid starts to like it's it's overpowering the other stuff. I just have a bad feeling it's going to be in the flavor too. <laughs> I have a really bad feeling about this. All right. Um, I mean, I can taste that Band-Aid. I can taste that plastic. It's just like, though, it's just, this is such a weird experience. <laughs> I know. It's so like, weird. It's so weird. I, I am getting the roast, like that kind of, a little bit of a coffee roastiness mm-hmm. peeking through, though. Because I keep wanting to, like, compare it to regular beer. I'm like, okay, I don't, don't, think you can. don't compare it to regular yeah. beer. Just drink I it just, and evaluate it on its own. Yeah. I don't think you, you can do that. You can't. All it's, of them have like this real similar bodies though. Yeah. Like it's very. They're so, and the, and really flat on the carbonation. There's not a lot of carbonation in them either. I kind of like that aspect of it though. Like I don't yeah, need a I lot of carbonation. I don't, I don't need a lot, but I like a little bit more than this. Okay. So like I said, it's got that bit of like that plastic, that band aid. But as I keep sipping on it, that ashy, like that roasty ashiness yeah. starts coming out yeah. more. And I am getting a little bit of chocolate. So this is actually not too bad. I think out of all of them, this is the one I can keep, I can drink more of. It's like, it's kind of like watered down, like super watered down coffee a little bit. Uh, yeah. Is, is kind of what it tastes like. Give me, like, an Imperial version of this, maybe, and we could see. <laughs> can uh, I don't think they can do that. Can I have an, can I have an Imperial non-alcoholic beer, please? <laughs> well, and that's a weird thing to point out, too, but when they say IPA, this Bravis IPA, like, IPA, Imperial IPA, Palo, all that is predicated on alcohol right. level. So how is that an IPA versus a Pale Ale? Like, that's a Pale Ale, right? Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. But anyway, okay. Let's let's. What's your rating on this? So one? I'm going to give this a two. Yeah, I'm going to two as well. It's. I think it's about as good as the first one. Maybe slightly it, better, but not a whole number. Yeah, I agree. I would so. say I think it is. I think it is better than the um, Partake Blonde, but yeah. not. Yeah, not a full number. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So what is it? Oh yeah, I have to tell you what it is. <laughs> I was just going to move to the next one. Okay. So your guess on this is a what style? It has to be a stout reporter. Okay. So this is, yes, it's an oatmeal stout, Rebecca. Okay. Which is maybe why it has a little more body. Okay. Uh, So it is by Bravis Brewing. They did the first one. This is a Great American Beer Festival silver medalist in 2019. Interesting. So that might just indicate to you that non-alcoholic stout's just not so hot. (laughs) You know? Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, so, uh, let's see if the, yeah, it's the same ingredients as the IPA. They just, vague listing of that. Yeah, it's just just like every, all the basic ingredients you would put in a beer. Yeah, 
all these. Okay, now let's okay. move on to the fourth Here we one. go. Let's see what this is all about. This looks like what? It looks like an IPA. It looks darker, though. Like, it it's is... a real deep orange. Yeah, almost uh, hints of red. Once again, and very it's clear. clear. Yeah, very clear. Now, this Ooh. is the one. This smells most like a beer. Yeah, this actually has a nice nose this to it. It smells like hoppy. Yeah, it actually, yeah. Yeah, I smell like a nice citrusy hoppiness oh my gosh. in there. It's like, this smells like a beer for, sh- like, for, like, legit, for sure. <laughs> like, like, for sure, for, for sure. sure. <laughs> like, I'm actually no really jokes. excited right now. If this t- <laughs> If this tastes anything like it smells, this is actually going to be good. Because, I mean, you get, bit. like, citrus and, like, some sweetness and some bitterness. Yeah. It it, it smells – it has a really nice nose to it. Like, I get a lot of really nice citrusy hoppy notes in the nose, and then there's a little bit of, like, a bubble gum in there. I will say – the same, like, weird smell that we've gotten from the other ones, I still get it in that, That though. little tanginess. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it's but it's being covered up a lot by that hoppy, that nice like citrusy hoppy note, in my opinion. Doesn't taste that bad. No, still thin, still the same mouthfeel. Decent bitterness though. Yeah, there is a decent bitterness to it. Um, I'm going to need to take a few sips of this to like really acclimate to that because I think that's. Between that decent bitterness and the very light body, I think it's downplaying a lot of those citrusy notes. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Um, because it, the, the bitterness is is really, really significant. But this is by far the cl- closest to a beer. And it's got like that tangy, that, that tanginess yeah. that all these beers have. It's weird. But you know what? We're good. I feel like this is like, hey, you're getting closer. So this has to be. I'm gonna call. The, I'm gonna call this an IPA. I mean, for what it is, it's not that bad. No, to be honest, it's like really bitter though. Yeah. Well, um, and that's the problem is that the the light body that bitterness just carries like crazy. But it reminds me. Of a beer, for sure. No, it does. And I do get that, like, I get a little bit of citrusiness as mm-hmm. I keep sipping it. Like, yeah. my my palate's acc- uh, acclimating to the, the bitterness more, and I'm getting a little more of that citrus. Okay. What are you going to give this one? I'm going to give it a three. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking I'm going to give it a three as well. So I this, think... We're moving up. We are moving up. And again, up. this so is... Untap hasn't lied yet. This is... On the non-alcoholic beer yes. scale. This is its own scale. <laughs> we are rating it with the same numbers as the normal beers, but this is its own scale for sure. I think it, for me, it's a full number higher than the last two. Yeah. So. So your guess is an IPA on this, mm-hmm. you said? Okay. Yeah. It is. It is an IPA. 0.3% alcohol. And this is another one by Partake Brewing Partake. out of Canada. Uh, same ingredients. <laughs> yeah. Nothing special. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's move on to number five now. And what does that one look like? Okay. Super orange. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It looks orange. It looks clear, it looks, yep. though. And this has, I think... No. Oh, it has a decent head yeah. chilling on it. So I think there's more of a head and more carbonation. It looks like there's more carbonation than in the other ones. Yeah, definitely. Swirl it mm. up. And it smells even more like a beer. <laughs> we're we're progressively smelling more like beers here. Yeah, it does. Now, and here here's an interesting thing that I need to throw out there. So just so people know, because full transparency with this podcast, as we always do, we initially were like, we're just going to drink the first four, then stop recording, and then drink the other four another time. Because if we like them, we want to be able to, you know, take our time and enjoy them. So we had the first four beers sitting out for about a half an hour before they were poured. So they could kind of warm up. Now these, not so much because we decided we're just going to record it all in one shot now. Because we were like, we're probably dumping all the first four so we can just go straight through. So these last four beers will be colder. So that might be good for that kind of weird tangy note. Hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. So we'll have to figure that one out too. But yes, this does smell this more like is, a beer. 
I think it definitely like hoppy, yeah, citrusy. It, I mean, these beers aren't like super complex. No, no, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. They're pretty, um, but it smells like a hoppy IPA type beer. Yeah, well, in this one, I think you're saying like citrusy. I feel like I get a bit of an orange smell with a bitterness that makes it smell a little orange peel on top mm-hmm. of the orange fruit. But then there's also a little bit of a pine note in the nose, too. There definitely too. is pine. And a little bit of honey sweetness. I was going to say pineapple. Um, sure, yeah. I think there's a little no, bit of that, that in there. Um, yeah, I could see that. But it's it's pretty, not a lot, not a lot going on in this. It's a very thin mouthfeel again. This is a theme here. But once again, like, it's this better. actually kind of tastes like beer. That's, it's it's this, a little beer-like now. This is a little bit better than the last one. But is it enough for another number? No. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna put a three on this one as well. Because I, I feel like the, the last one, that Partake IPA and this one are kind of similar. Yeah. I, I do one, say this one's a little this bit one better. This one is a little bit better, Yeah, for a sure. little bit, but not enough for a full number. If we were doing halves, I'd give it a half. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not getting as much tang. I'm not getting yeah. as much of that off-putting flavor. To me, it just is... But the tang is there. I'm not getting it. It is. Like, I taste it, but I think that a combination of potentially the colder yeah, temperature of the beer... We're just getting used to it. <laughs> right. Well, no, no, I don't think it's that, because we're very sensitive to this <laughs> flavor. We're like, that and beer, what the hell? I feel like I feel like that smell makes me think I'm going to get diarrhea from drinking these. <laughs> you know, the more I drink this one, it's not that bad. No, and it's not. It's really not that bad. Okay. I mean, I, w- I would drink regular beer over it, but you know. So you're doing three as well for yeah. this one? Okay. Yeah. So this one's tied with the last one. So this has to be another, like, IPA. So you're saying IPA? Yeah. Okay. This one is a pale ale. Oh, okay. okay, whatever. Also by Partake Brewing. Okay. And 0.3% alcohol, once again. Let's see if there's anything different in the ingredients. No. So there you go. Okay. Another Partake. So I felt like this tasted like the one before it, the Partake IPA. They taste kind of similar, and they both yeah. taste kind of IPA-like. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's Interesting. good. That's okay. a positive. Okay, so, so the so next far, one. So far, the Partake's... Because, again, we just have two breweries on the running. So, yes. so far, Partake is... Taking it. Taking it. Is what I'd say, yeah. Definitely okay. between the two. Okay, so number six looks hazy. hazy. Very hazy. The haziest one we've seen thus far. Yeah, and yeah it's, it's very yellow. Yeah, yellow, like straw. Very yellow. What the... <laughs> what does that smell like? I'll let you lead on it. Because I know what these are, so go Oh, ahead. okay. You know. What does it smell like to you? It smells like pineapple juice. It definitely smells like juice to me. It smells like it's very juicy. That it, weird tang note is in there. It's still there. It smells like a little like pine saw. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I get like, I do get like an orange juice to it. Yeah, it's juicy. Yeah, it's definitely juicy. It's weird. It doesn't smell very beer y. Yeah, no, it's, it's. It's fruit forward, but the fruit is weird. (laughs) Yeah, it's like artificial type. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, yeah. It doesn't. Okay. There's a little bit of a bitterness in the end, but yeah, I I agree with your assessment of pine saw. It is kind of like a smell of pine saw mixed with uh, orange juice. And that's exactly how it tastes, too. It's not that bad, actually. It's weird. It's so weird. This does not remind me of a beer at all. This doesn't taste like a beer, but it doesn't taste bad. Just mm, as as I a don't... as a beverage. <laughs> I know you do have to just think of it. it it's just a drink. This just is a, a beverage. beverage. <laughs> it's not bad. Like I like that orange juiciness to it. I actually like that little bit of the pine salt note. It's kind of coming off. Feel, feel just, me on this. It's coming off a little lemon lime. Yes. So you it's like lemon said, lime orange juice. You just said I like pine saw in a sentence. I said I like the pine saw note. <laughs> I actually kind of like this. Really? Okay. I I, I like don't. It. Um, 
it's it's too weird for me. I'm not going to reach for this where I'm like, man, I'd like to have a beer but no alcohol. Because it doesn't taste like that to me. But <laughs> I want a beer with no alcohol that tastes like pine salt. It's not bad, though. Like oh, I, see, I, I don't like of, it. I kind of enjoy it a little bit. I, I, I don't. Okay, so what are you going to give it? Um, It's not a one, so I'm going to give it a two. Hmm. I'm trying to figure this out. Because that weird kind of like Band-Aid plasticky note is in there still. So... Yeah, I think, but I like the orange. This is one of those ones where if we were doing the halves, I you would wanna, probably give it that half. You want a two and a half? Um, I'm going to give it, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give it the four because I kind of like it. And you're giving you're it giving a it, four? You're giving it a two, so it'll come out to a three, which makes sense. You're giving this a four? Yeah. This is your favorite so far? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what the numbers are saying. Yeah, I mean... Be confident. If you if you're telling me of these six beers we've just had, I have to drink the rest of one of them. This is the one you this want. This is probably the one I'm gonna do. Okay. Yeah. Even though it doesn't really taste like beer. But like I like the fruit notes that come okay, out. Okay, but I that's really all that do. matters. It doesn't Yeah. Be not drinking it's get drunk, that's for damn sure. <laughs> okay. So what is this beer? What's your guess on the style? A, I think it's a pineapple wheat. Oh, that's a that's a bold guess. <laughs> Very specific and bold guess. So it's just called a white ale. Oh. Now this one is by Bravis, and it has an orange on the front. So it, yeah, it says water, malted barley, malted wheat. There's wheat in it. Flaked oats, orange peel, coriander, hops, yeast. So this is supposed to be like a blue moon. Yeah, it's kind, kind of. of their non-alcoholic blue moon, which. Okay, I could see that. I might drink this. I'd drink this over Blue Moon. Let's let me let me just really? say that. Not from a taste perspective, from a uh, principle perspective, okay. is I would never buy Blue Moon because of who they're owned by. Yeah. Therefore, I'd rather drink this Bravis White Ale than that. Okay. Kind of dig it. Okay. Like I kind of dig it. So it's a weird on, thing. But, going all right. on to number seven. All right, number seven, second to last. So I feel for the most part, these untapped ratings have been guiding us yeah. properly. I, I, so yeah. that's good. Okay, so what does number seven look like? It looks orange, but... It's like yellow orange. Kind of hazy. I Not... just burped a little bit and it tasted like <laughs> horseradish. <laughs> Did you eat something horseradish? No. No, well, that's weird. Something in the beer. Why. I'm worried how I'm going to feel the rest or of the Or the night. combination of the beers. Is it safe to, to mix these beers? <laughs> Stop I, it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I start having stomach aches oh, later hold on. tonight. I feel like this 0.3% is catching up to me. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, so it's like orangish. Yeah, a little hazy ish. What does it smell like? This actually kind of smells good. I kind of like this smell. It does smell good. Well, what do you think it smells like? Mm, it smells like caramel, candied oranges and caramel. I am getting like a caramel note. It definitely smells fruity to me. I'm not going to talk about like specifically what fruit I get because I know what it is. Oh, it smells a little like fruit punch. I could see that. Yeah. It doesn't really smell like a beer though. No, it doesn't you, you smell just like get a beer. Like the fruit, and you get like a little bit of a tangy tartness to the fruit, plus the sweetness from the fruit. I mean, it really just smells like the fruit. <laughs> that's pretty much it. And that's kind of just what it tastes like, too. Oh, this isn't bad. No, this, but it doesn't taste or remind me of a beer at all. It's uh, a fruity beverage. It's sour. It is a little tart. Yeah, it's yeah, it's probably more tart. You're right. It's probably more tart than sour. Although I'm getting a little phlegm buildup going on here. I like the fruit note in it. The body seems a little more substantial. Yes, I think that's because of the tartness. Same with the last one. The last one's body was a little yeah. No, it's true. Um, had more body. And I think it's because there's more stuff added. Yeah, is what it seems like for this one, and we know for the last one, so. Yeah, I kind of like this one. Yeah, this one's... I could drink this. Yeah, it's like a light juice, kind of. You know? 
Can okay. You pinpoint that fruit. No. All right. What are you giving this one? I'm going to give this one a four. Yeah. I'm doing a four on this one as well. Definitely. That's, I would drink that. I think, well, let me check now. Now, which one? Yeah. Well, I? now. The pine yeah. salt. This one's better. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, because the fruitiness plus that extra addition of that, like, tartness. I really like mm-hmm. the tartness in that. Yeah. It's kind of nice. It, it makes it more complex, for yeah. sure. And I like the body. The mm-hmm. body. Definitely. It, it's all coming together. So that is the leader at the moment. It is. Just so you know. Okay, so. What's your guess on the style? What is this? What is this? I have no idea. I mean, it's tart, so I could say some sort of fruit, like a fruited sour. Okay. Is that is that your final guess? Yes. It's, it does. It does smell grapey. Does it? Okay. Maybe I, I don't know. Okay, so know. it it's is a, sour. a raspberry goza. You know, I almost said goza. Okay. I mean, you were in the ballpark. You said fruited goza. sour, raspberry? so. Raspberry, yeah. I mean, I smelled it. Like, I knew what it was going into it. I did smell it. But I see where you were getting what you were getting, so. I don't um, know. And this one's by Bravis Brewing. Okay. Uh, Bravis has... Okay, so here are the extra um, ingredients on this one. Raspberries, coriander, and pink Himalayan salt. Hmm. Okay, so now so... Bravis has the two top ones. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So let's, let's jump to the final beer and then I'm going to compile everything and we'll just do the. See, now that I know it's raspberry, I still can't. You still can't get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see it, but I also see what you're saying that it's not like super clear. Okay. So let's go to the final one. This one is is very dark red. Like amber. Yeah. Like brownish almost maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean. Amber, red. Yeah. All right. Man, it smells really peaty. <sighs> peaty? Peaty. I can see what you're saying. It, it's very malt driven and it's relatively pronounced with that kind of weird tang note in the mm-hmm. nose that we've been Gosh, getting so from a bunch of these. All, yeah. yeah, they all have that. Mm hmm. And that's it. Yeah, there's not a lot. It's mainly just like, there's a little honey, there's a little hay, there's some straw to it, and it's just mainly like malt. It smells like a lot of like malt with a little tang to it. Yeah, that's what it smells like. I mean... Pretty watery, it kind of falls flat. Yeah. Um. Yep. It reminds me of a beer, though. Mm-hmm. It's beer-esque. Yeah, it's like a really watered-down beer. Like a basic beer. You can tell there's not a whole lot of hopping to it or anything. It's very malt-driven, but once again, it's very watery, so... I mean, if yeah. someone gave this to me and said this is a beer, I'd probably believe them. It would just be like, oh, someone just, you know, I'm makes like, a kind of crappy a, beer. Right, it's not a very good <laughs> beer, but it's a beer... Yeah, I mean, it does taste pretty close to actual beer. Mm -hmm. I think out of all of them, that is the closest. Yeah, you're probably right. And the least offensive with some of the other weird notes. Mm -hmm. I think out of all of them, I could drink this one the most. So I think really what's coming out of this is that you got to add extra. At least what we're seeing here is that you can't just make straight up non-alcoholic beer styles. You got to add something. Yeah. You know, uh, whether it's a decent amount of hopping in the right way with, like, the pale ale and the IPA that we liked, or it's, you know, fruit well, and coriander and salt and all that type of stuff. Well, you got to rate oh. it. What are you going to do with this um, I was like, and and what is this? Um, I'm going to give this one a four, too. Really? Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get crazy on that. I'm going to give it a three. Because, I mean, it does quite taste like a beer, and it's not offensive, really. No, I think this is... It's not bad. Okay, so this one, any guesses on stuff? I think it's a red. 
Red. It is literally called red. Ding, ding, ding. Point. Yes. So it's a red ale by Partake, and it is 0.3% alcohol and just the normal stuff in there. So um, just going to go ahead and compile this. I'm going to pause, compile these numbers real quick, and then we'll resume, and I'll give you the total ranking. All right, so it's all ranked and tallied up and everything, so I'm going to go through the list, and there obviously were ones that had the same overall number, so Rebecca and I just talked about it and hashed it out to put them in the right order. So this is our order. The worst, and we would not recommend, the Bravis IPA. No thank you. Terrible. Uh, Then in the number um, seven slot, the Bravis Oatmeal Stout, also not so hot. Uh, Then... The Partake Blonde, starting to get better there. Then the Partake IPA. Then the Bravis White Ale. Then the Partake Pale. Then the Partake Red Ale. And then the number one beer for this was the Bravis Raspberry Goza. So overall, we kind of tallied it up. And Partake did better than Bravis. Because we just tallied all the full number. All the numbers up. And Bravis got a total of 10 points, and Partake got a total of 11.5. But it's kind of close. Pretty close, yeah. So, um, but if you look at the standings, you know, Bravis had the number one, but then they also had the last and the second to last, and then one in the middle. Partake was more, more, in the middle. more clustered. They seemed a little more consistent. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is Bravis seems to have this underlying kind of band-aid... Uh, plasticky flavor throughout that I'm they, not a fan of. I think of. they both did, though. Well, I think it's... Okay, so they both have, like, a tang to them. Well, I, both the breweries, all their beers have, like, that weird kind of non, non-alcoholic beer tang is what it seems like. But the Bravis, non-alcoholic beer tang. Right. It's but a I, thing. But I feel like, in addition, Bravis has this weird Band-Aid and um, plastic note in all the beers now with the ones that they added additional stuff to i think it downplays it a lot Mm -hmm. successfully like the white ale and the raspberry goza so those are pretty good for that reason but i just think that partake is doing closer to beer like their beers taste closer to actual beers in my opinion and they're a little cleaner flavor so that's just my feeling on it now um yeah so was this educational? Yes. <laughs> yes. It was it w- definitely educational. So would you recommend that anyone buy any of these, really? I mean, it's kind of hard because the people people who drink beer are probably not going to drink buy these. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, you know, you're, you're marketing. I'm not really sure who you're marketing to, but you're not marketing to a beer drinker. So you're marketing to either people who don't like beer and just want a beverage or want to go out and and drink a beverage because they can or or shouldn't or, you know, something about, you know, alcohol. Well, maybe it's a situation where it's someone who needs to stay away from alcohol. Correct. So they want something that reminds them of a right. beer, in which case of these two breweries, I would recommend Partake. Right. Out of I Toronto, say. Canada. So you had asked me a question um, off podcast. Right. What was that? Oh, because I, I knew you had emailed these breweries. No, actually, I did not email these breweries. This is what I did. I just straight up purchased from Bravis and Partake the mix packs because they had mix packs. Like I said before, there were other breweries who, if I wanted their beers for something like this, I would have to get you know, entire right. six packs of a bunch of different beers. Oh, and I wasn't going to do that. Having... No. Yeah. Can you imagine if I got a six pack, every one of these beers, oh my God. I'd be like, no, oh, no, <laughs> it'd be bad. I mean, I... we'd have to give them away <clears throat> as totally ed- educational yeah. experiences. Yeah. Drink this. It's not going to be good, but drink it. Yeah. So, um, so with the other breweries, I was like, well, let me just email them and see if I can ask them if I can purchase a mix pack somehow. Cause it's not available on their website. But maybe they'll allow me to do, like, a mix and match or something. So I actually had two of the breweries respond to me, and they're just going to send free beer. So we're doing this again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're doing it again. No! Yes. So we're doing another non-alcoholic beer tournament of two breweries that 
are sending free non-alcoholic beer to us, okay. which is cool. And let me let me give you a little bit of hope because I know when I say this, you're like, God, not again. Overall, these two breweries have better ratings on Untapped okay. than both of these breweries. And Untapped so far has stared us right. right. Also, they have more interesting stuff. Oh. Sty- stylistically. For the most part, these are pretty simplistic. Yeah. You know, these are pretty like, like pale ale IPA. Right. These two breweries sending beer are not. Oh. A lot of their beers are more interesting looking. Okay. So so we maybe, will see. Maybe no tang and maybe more body. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I mean, I'm I'm going to de facto assume that we're going to get that tang because it's seeming like maybe that's just a non-alcoholic beer thing that you can't get yeah. around. But we'll see. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so we'll, we'll do the <laughs> non, uh, non-alcoholic beer tournament part two. Yes. we. Yeah, that's exactly the plan. And um, I don't know when we're putting it out. We might put it out like right after this one. Back to back. Yeah, because I should be getting the beers. Um, Now, on the chance that they told me they're sending beers, on the chance that they don't send me beers, then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, But we'll see. But anyway, uh, this was educational. This was fun. I would like to hear some feedback from people if you want to, you know, email us, brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. Did you find this educational? Did you find this helpful? Does this make you want to go out and drink (laughs) non-alcoholic beer? Probably not. I mean, I... Wouldn't, based on this, really recommend it. But but at the same time, like I said, there's some of these that actually aren't that bad. Like, they're not offensive. It's just, in what situation are you seeking them? Right. You know? So, I don't know. But make up your own mind based on what you heard. Maybe some people will love this. And uh, I will also say that I was letting Kyle no- Norman, longtime listener Kyle Norman, know before we did this that I was going to do a non-alcoholic beer thing. And then that got him thinking... So he bought a non-alcoholic beer from BrewDog that's, like, supposed to be a hoppy one in collaboration with the metal band Lamb of God, um, which is, seems weird that a collaboration with a brewery and a heavy metal band would be a non-alcoholic beer, but whatever. <laughs> so he's going to try that, so hopefully he gives me feedback on that and I can tell everyone on the podcast how that was. We will, on, on our quest to find the best <laughs> non-alcoholic beer. If that exists. Oh, I do want to say really, really quick. I was very intrigued by this. So Bravis on their web- website at some point, because I'd been watching it, because um, I wanted to know when they were going to have like a mix pack. They it, it already sold out, but they had a bourbon barrel aged non-alcoholic stout. Yeah, see, I would like to try <laughs> that. Like that would be very interesting. I mean, I don't know what that would do. I mean, hopefully it would give it like caramel and yeah. like vanilla and some wood. Like that would be cool. But yeah. Anyway, so that was the last thing I wanted to say. Thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Rebecca, thank you for hunkering yeah. down and drinking Ooh. non-alcoholic beverages. It's a little tough. <laughs> but thanks, everyone, and until next time. Keep it brutal. I feel so-